Hey guys, today we're talking about front wheel drive Mazda transmissions. I know, super exciting. Uh, these pretty much same basic type of transmission came from 1983 through the late 2000s. Uh, this is an H type, this came on like Turbo MX6s and Pro V6s, first generation. Uh, there's a common problem with all these transmissions that they pop out of fifth gear, people drive with their hands on the shifter, it kind of try to push his, it pushes fifth beyond where it really needs to be. Uh, it's a pretty simple fix, does not require you to pull the uh, transmission out of the car, you can fix it with it in the car, and I'm gonna show you how. Uh, some of the tools you'll need, you'll need a one and a half inch socket, you'll need a one and one sixteen socket, a punch, a hammer, a 10 millimeter, some RTV, and a, a torque wrench. We're gonna get started. So this transmission came from a 90 to 92 Probe LX V6. Um, unfortunately, it was at my shop and my shop flooded in 2011. And we're just gonna pull it apart. I'm gonna kind of show you the process. Basically, when your driver's front wheel off, uh, the inner fender comes out with a couple tens. You'll be looking at this outer case of the transmission. This is the part, this is what houses fifth and reverse. So you're gonna take your 10 millimeter and pull the ring of bolts. And then this pan comes off. Now this transmission is going to be pretty ugly inside because it took on, took on some water. But and uh, I've had it off before, so you're gonna on your car you'll likely have to take a uh, uh, a hammer and kind of tap on this around the edge and break the seal. And then this just comes off. It's actually not too rusty. So now you're looking at fifth gear. Here's the shift fork. Uh, this is the input shaft fifth gear. The outer gear is actually reverse. This gear right here is fifth. Uh, this is the output shaft here. Um, the first thing you want to do at this point is uh, kind of assess the situation. Uh, when this gear, when this wears, when it pops out of fifth, this develops some lateral play in and out, and you'll actually be able to move the slider. This has a little bit of play; it's not too bad. Uh, but we're going to pull this apart, and I'm going to show you the process. So, for the purpose of this part of the video, I flipped the transmission on its side. This is essentially the bottom of the transmission. You'd be looking at this. The first thing you want to do once you get this pan off spray some brake clean, kind of clean all this off, is take a punch and drive this roll pin towards the top of your vehicle, towards this, actually just drive it away from what you can see. Uh, this, that pin is located right here. Uh, you can use a center punch, sometimes you can use a bolt to get it started. Just make sure you don't use a screwdriver because that can kind of flare out that roll pin and you'll never get it out. All right, so here's the roll pin. I just tapped it out with a punch. Uh, before we get any further, one of the things I would definitely do, uh, kind of save you some trouble, before you even crack this pan off, before you even get started, jack up the driver's side of your vehicle, uh, probably about a foot and a half off the ground. Uh, if you make it a little angled towards the passenger side, the transmission fluid will run away from this side of the transmission, which will keep you from having to add transmission fluid and to keep transmission fluid from hitting the ground when you do this. So the next thing, uh, now this is pretty rusty, so this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, is you need to shift this. When you pull the roll pin out, it, it basically makes the shift fork move independent from the shift rod. So we need to shift this, uh, kind of give it a tap of the hammer. I have to turn it a little bit. All right, there we go. So now it is in fifth gear. And since the transmission is already in another gear, you can go in your car and shift it into first. If you put it into two gears at once, it basically keeps these shafts from rotating. I'm going to flip this transmission on its side and I'm going to show you the removal process. All right, I got this transmission on its side. The first thing we want to do before we try to take anything apart is take your hammer and your chisel. And as you can see, these nuts are staked kind of like an axle nut. And you want to kind of straighten this out so that you don't tear up the shafts trying to spin these off. Also makes getting them off a little easier. Just take your chisel in and kind of give it a couple taps and Straightening them out is pretty simple. They're not the strongest metal. Got those knocked out the best I can. And the first thing we want to do is take your inch and a half socket. I got a big impact, but you can do this in the junkyard or with a breaker bar. It's uh, pretty simple. Once the transmission's in two gears, that these, these just can't rotate. And just, there's that one. And then take your inch and sixteenths. All right, nuts came off pretty simple. First thing, slide this, this is the output reverse. The pull on this at the same time you pull on that gear, the, uh, this fifth gear, that's the uh, input shaft fifth. 
um, wiggle it, move it at the same time. Um, I would advise against prying it. You won't have to on yours. Just, all right, here we go. All right, coming off. Takes a little patience and persuasion. All right, there's the shift fork. That's the uh, culprit for most of the problem. And this is a fifth gear pack. Now this is the needle bearing and the sleeve. We'll get to that in a minute. But this is what you need to keep together. This is pretty dirty. Yours are probably not gonna look like this. If they're damaged or not, you really can't tell just by a, a simple visual inspection. You do have to pull this apart. But typically I don't see any damage with this slider. Most of the damage happens on this fork. And as you can see, this one has some wear. It's not, it's not too bad, but I've seen much better. Uh, you'll notice that the, most of the damage is right here on the tips of the fingers here or along this ridge. If this is all shiny from tip to tip, then this fork is bad. That means you've worn significantly, uh, significant amount of material off of this and it can't fully engage fifth gear. Again, this, this shift uh, rod right here, it moves this, it pulls this down into fifth when you shift it into fifth. And if there's not enough material here, it can't fully, it can't push it far enough, which is, that's, that's why it pops out of fifth, it's because it's not fully engaged. Uh, you can't buy this anymore, it's kind of an obsolete part, so your best bet is to hunt around in the salvage yards for them. Now next we're going to pull this gear off, it should just come off pretty easily. And now this is the most important part of this video. There's a small ball bearing I have in my hand, I don't know if the camera's even going to pick it up, that fits in a dimple that's in the top of the input shaft. What this does is this locates this sleeve which fifth gear rides on. And if this falls off and you lose it, you should not put your transmission back together. This could fall out, sometimes it gets stuck in there, uh, but typically speaking, they're pretty loose. As soon as the sleeve comes off, uh, this ball can fall out. So you wanna turn your input shaft, when you have to put the transmission in neutral for this, uh, turn your input shaft to where that dimple faces up, that way gravity will hold the ball in, and you just set it in there just like that. And as you can see, on the sleeve there's a detent, much like a woodruff key on a crankshaft, this just slides and this locates this, from, keeps that from spinning. And this is what this needle bearing, which is for fifth gear, rides on. So now if you don't put that ball in, then fifth gear will never synchronize properly. And the transmission could blow up in glorious fashion. I've done it at least once. Well, actually only once. Regardless, make sure you do not lose that ball. That is very important. Next thing you want to do, take your output shaft fifth gear, now that you've got your sleeve and your needle bearing installed, and make sure you install this with this raised part. I don't know if you can see that. This, ra this flange part goes in. So you slide that, and it's like a perfect fit. There's very little tolerance, so sometimes you gotta kinda play with that to get that on. I've got the output shaft fifth in. It's not completely pushing against the case. It's kinda halfway. It's where it needs to be. You got your shift fork on the slider, just like it's supposed to be. Make sure that this is as tight as it can be. And just, you want to line up the shift fork with the shift rod and then the fifth gear with the uh, input shaft. You kind of put this all on at one time. You gotta have to massage it and rotate some stuff as it goes on. And eventually it'll be all the way on. All right, looks like we are all the way in. And then you take your output shaft reverse, put it on and you are together. The next thing, take the, your nuts and go back on. All right, now, just like I did when I took this apart, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to shift this into fifth gear as well as put your shifter in the car in the first gear. This locks the transmission, keeps the input and output shaft from, from turning. So to get this into fifth gear, just take the end of a hammer or something and kind of just give that a couple taps. It should make an audible noise, and this one is not wanting to do that for whatever reason. Probably because this went through a flood. I've got it in the fifth. This, this fork is as far down as it can go. Uh, now that it's time that you can torque, tighten these nuts down. These, are go, these tighten up to 125 foot-pounds. They actually tell you like 94 to 150 something, but 125 is the average. I've never had a problem at that. Make sure that when you tighten these down, you restake these nuts, take a hammer and your flat blade chisel, and tap them back down just the way they were. Again, I've turned this transmission on its face. 
Uh, just for the purpose of this video, this is what you'd be looking at from the bottom of the car. Now it's time to reinsert the roll pin, but before we can do that, we need to shift it out of fifth gear or whatever it takes to line up this hole to where you can see daylight or see light through it. So in this case, that is right here. And take your roll pin, line it up, and just kind of give it a couple taps. It'll go right in. All right, it should be flush with that shift fork, and you're done. At this point, you need to clean up your fifth gear pan. Now, this one's disgusting. Clean all this out and make sure that you take, get all the old RTV off of this flange. Same thing with the transmission. Take a razor blade and kind of trim, get as much of this off as you can. Uh, as far as resealing it, I use uh, gray RTV. Gray or black will work. I really wouldn't use any of the other colors. It's a pretty simple process. You don't have to overly tighten these tens. They're just six by 1.0 threads. So don't go too crazy with it. There is a torque spec for it. I don't know it off the top of my head, but it's probably in line with every other six by 1.0 bolt. Now, if you have your vehicle at an angle, like I suggest, I would probably let it sit like that for a few hours and let the RTV get tacky before you let uh, transmission fluid back in it and take it off the jack stands. So it's really not that difficult. Uh, I know it seems intimidating getting inside of a transmission, but this is a, a great first step if you've never done this. Uh, the tools, are, there's nothing special outside of the, the larger sockets. Now if you do have, uh, depending on the vehicle you have, the, that nut size can change. If you have like a, the G series transmission, this is an H, this is the, the big or strong front wheel drive Mazda transmission. The G series is the most common and then they had an F series which came in the small cars. You can't mix and match between F, G and H, but if you wanted to change the gear ratio you can do that as long as you stay within the same type of transmission, but the process is the same. Make sure you're not driving with your hand on the shifter. That was, that's what wears this out. And also make sure you have the proper fluid level. Uh, those are two things that will greatly increase the life of your transmission. Subscribe for more fun videos on front wheel drive Mazda stuff as well as some other stuff. And I will talk to you guys later.